Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about how to finish a guitar neck. So before we dive right into the demo here, let's talk just a little bit about what you want out of a guitar neck finish. Now, you'll note a lot of guitar necks come looking as though they're unfinished. They're not. There's, there's stuff on them. Uh, most of them have a thin coat of a poly or an oil or something like that. But, you know, they, there's not a whole lot going on back there. Now, on some guitars, it's painted to match the guitar. And in a lot of cases, that looks good. But if you've ever played a guitar with a nice thin neck and you've tried to play it fast uh, and it has kind of a bare wood-ish finish, or matte finish or a satin finish, you'll note that it's, it's pretty quick. You can move your hand along very easily. It doesn't really stick or anything. And then if you go play a guitar that, you know, it's more typical on the ones with the kind of meatier necks, but you, you play a guitar that has a gloss finish on the back of the neck, you'll see that if you try and play quickly, your hand kind of sticks to it. You know, get kind of this, uh, I don't really know uh, how to put it, but you know, like that squeaking type thing, you'll, your hand will squeak along the back as it runs over the gloss. So in most cases, people don't really like gloss finish necks. I, in particular, am certain that I don't. I don't know about you, you may have a, a different preference than I do, but I think kind of the typical starting point is that a gloss finish back of the neck is not a great idea. So what I'm gonna show you today is how to prep your guitar neck for paint, or any kind of finish for that matter, uh, and then you can once it's ready to go with that, you scuff it up and you, you can go in there with pretty much whatever you want. You can spray can it, you can do pretty much <laughs> pretty much any finish that you like. I'm going to do one by hand today and we'll see how it looks at the end. First things first here, you're going to want to tape up, just like with any other paint job, the areas that you don't want to get paint on. So, I mean, in a lot of cases you may want to put a finish on your fretboard, but it's probably not going to be the same finish you're putting on the rest of your neck. It might be. Um, but in those cases, you'll just tape up the frets. For this one, I'm not going to paint the fretboard because people typically don't do that. That's not to say that they can't. There are fretboards out there with gloss finishes on them, and there's really nothing wrong with that. This thing doesn't stand up very well, does it? Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not what we're going for today. So you need to very carefully take a strip of masking tape and line it up with the edge of the fretboard. Now this does take some practice. If you're not used to taping things, you might have to uh, either take a little longer at it or do it in several pieces. There's nothing wrong with that. You can use more than one chunk of tape if you have to. It can be difficult to lay down a full long strip like this. But as you get used to it, it becomes less difficult. You'll notice I stuck one side down first I'm controlling the other side with one of my hands and I'm kind of just running my thumb along to make sure that it all lines up. So first off, I'm going to tape off the entire fretboard and make sure that we don't have any issues with that. So the next thing to be leery of is how your neck fits into your guitar. Now, in most cases, on a well-made guitar, the neck is going to slide into that pocket very tight. Now, you don't have to worry about this if you're painting a set neck or a through neck guitar. In those ones, you just kind of tape off the fretboard and, and go the way you do with the rest of the guitar. But on these bolt-ons, again, that, that's going to be a snug fit, and it should pretty much come right up at the top of the neck. So what you need to kind of do is put it in there, get your neck set into your guitar, and mark off 
how far it goes. The reason we do that is because if you build up a big, you know, a nice thick layer of finish on here, it's not going to fit properly, right? We want it to fit in the same way it did before. Now, in the event that your neck pocket's a little big, this might not be such a big deal. When you go to jam it in there, you will damage the paint in that area, almost certainly. But maybe that's not the end of the world if it gets your neck to fit a little better. In this case, and in most cases, the neck's going to fit well when you get it. So what you do is exactly what I'm doing. You mark off where the neck sits and you tape along that area, tape along the line where it sits into the pocket. And then uh, if you've got curved sections like mine does, you cut along those with your razor blade and peel off the excess so that the area where it actually sits into the pocket ends up being completely masked off. Oh, great job, Brad. Now, if you're not demonstrating this, it'll be easier just to kind of lay it down. But anyway, I don't know if this is actually benefiting you guys having me hold it like this. Don't forget to tape off the back, okay? The area where it's going to be snug is around the sides, and that's where you're really going to mess up your paint if you do that uh, without taping it. But if you don't tape the bottom, the whole neck's going to sit just a little bit higher than it did before, and that's going to have an effect on your action, it could create fret buzz if you don't set up accordingly. There's just, there's a bunch of negative nonsense that could occur that can be very easily avoided just by taping off the neck properly. So I like to use a razor blade to trim along my edge here and make sure that the tape runs perfectly along the edge. Make sure it's a brand new, fresh razor blade. They're nice and cheap. There's really no reason to be reusing them. All right, use a fresh one, it'll slide through that tape really easy, no tearing. You won't have to push too hard. You won't have as much risk to the rest of your neck. Not this neck, that one. Um, if you use a crappy old razor blade, then you're gonna have to push, you're gonna dig into the wood, and you're gonna create the potential for all sorts of other problems. So, if you're gonna be cheap about something, razor blades is not the place to do it. Having a fresh one is important and really it's not that expensive. Once you've got the tape work on your neck complete, it's time to sand it. I'm going to go at this whole thing with some 400 grit, make sure it's nice and scuffed up and ready to accept my new finish. Now once you've got it all sanded, there's a little bit more tape work to do, particularly if you're spraying it. I'm not spraying it this time, but we're going to do this anyway, or at least part of it. You're going to want to put a little bit of tape in where the truss rod goes in. All right, make sure you've cleaned this after you sanded it, by the way. I did that off camera. Just use some wax and grease remover, get it nice and clean. Put a little piece of tape balled up inside where the truss rod goes so you don't have to worry about paint getting in there and messing up your ability to adjust your guitar. And then you can do the same. Again, I just use a balled up piece of tape most of the time with your tuning peg holes. Get those nice and protected so that you don't get a huge buildup of paint on the inside. That then makes it more difficult for you to put your tuning pegs back in. Now, if you don't want to do that, and you do get a bunch of paint in there. It's not the end of the world for those. It's not good for the truss rod hole, but for those ones, you can just go back in with the same size drill bit and drill it out again, and it'll just rip all that paint out of there. So that one's not the worst, um, but you really don't wanna do that if you don't have to, because there is a risk every time you do something like that 
that it's gonna peel up the paint and screw up the paint around the hole. So the best kind of practice if you're gonna have to do that is to just take a razor blade and kind of gently scrape, well carefully I guess I would say, scrape and cut, or scrape or cut around the, uh, the outside of the hole there to separate the paint so it doesn't peel up the rest when you go at it with the drill bit. All right, so those are done now. Now it's time to select our finish and put it on there. As you can see, this neck has the nice stripe in there, rosewood I believe it is, on a maple neck. I don't really wanna cover that in paint, so I'm not gonna be spraying this, but if I were, this would be ready to spray now. I could go at it with a sealer or a primer if I wanted to, but I don't really need to. I could just really get right in there with my color, whether it happens to be a lacquer, polyurethane, acrylic enamel, doesn't really matter at this point, as long as you select paints that work with each other. And I mean, I've covered that a million times. So for this particular one, I wanna keep this. I wanna make sure it's not glossy. I want something that's gonna kinda of bring out that grain just a little bit, even though I haven't sanded back all the way to the grain. So what I'm gonna be using is Bellin's Teak Oil. You probably can't read that. <laughs> That's what it is, Bellin's Teak Oil, and I'm just gonna be applying it carefully with a shop towel. Now, a shop towel is really not the best thing to use for this. It is doable, but a lint-free cloth, a rag, is gonna be a better option. A paper towel, a normal one, is gonna be a worse option. I really recommend you don't do that. Sometimes when you pull the screws out of the back, of these headstocks, they leave little raised chunks of wood. And I mean, we're going in and refinishing this anyway. So if you wanna level all that out and your sandpaper's really not doing the job, what I like to do is just take my, again, fresh, or at least reasonably fresh at this point, razor blade, put it flat against there, and just scrape and take any of that excess off of there. Make sure everything's nice and flat. And that gives me a nice smooth surface to work with with my oil as well. You can do that on the front too. If you've got any nonsense happening there from this, the string trees, you can just scrape it back flat with the razor blade. All right, so now that I've gone in with the razor blade and made a mess again, I'm just gonna quickly clean this off get some wax and grease remover on there, make sure it's all good to go. And then we'll throw some teak oil on and you can see how that looks. And there we have it guys. Just a couple quick coats of the teak oil. It's been drying for about 15, 20 minutes now. You can see how it looks. It's kind of tough with the lighting, but uh, let, me, let me refocus you here. All right, so teak oil is a nice example of something that gives you a nice shine without giving you a gloss. And I know that's probably a confusing thing to say but this doesn't have a thick buildup of gloss on it. It's just got a nice shiny surface, kind of like a semi-gloss. So at this point, it's just a matter of peeling your tape off of here, getting your neck unmasked and everything, uh, your fretboard rather, unmasked and everything, and then you know remounting your hardware. It's pretty straightforward, and really that's all there is to it. So when you're wondering, can you use the same painting techniques on a neck as you can on a guitar? The answer is, yeah, you sure can. I wouldn't recommend going with gloss finishes, but that's a matter of personal preference. Really, you're just finishing another piece of wood. Happens to be a guitar neck. 
and you probably don't want paint all over your frets. So make sure you tape those off, make sure you tape off the heel, and from then on, it's just your average finishing product, or project rather. So, I hope that this helped, um, that you found the video useful. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a good one. If you like the video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up so YouTube's more likely to recommend it to other people. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed, please do so, unless you don't like me, in which case that wouldn't make any sense. So have a good one. I'll see you next time. Later.